Hello, my name is Deborah Rue, and I'm with Rue Global Impact, and also the executive chair of Billion Strong, and very proud to be an ambassador for Zero Conference as well as Zero Project. And today I have Neil Milliken with ATOS with me, and we're going to talk about treating inclusion like pollution. So welcome. Oh, did I say the title wrong already, Neil? So yes. why don't you correct me? Well, we, <laughs> we don't think that inclusion is pollution. We, we think that exclusion is pollution. So, Good point. Um, so this is, this is about how we um, embed disability inclusion, accessibility into our corporate governance and how we take our approach to our program to align it with the way that we deal with decarbonization and sustainability, etc. So we know that um, essentially when an organization produces products or services and they don't think about including people and they exclude them, that creates costs for individuals, costs for society, costs for government, and that's a negative externality in the same way that carbon emissions are a negative externality in our pollution. So we're taking the same approach to how we do our governance around this um, to really make sure that we build inclusive products and services and structures for our organization, which is a big and complex one. So we right. do need that structure. And Neil, what organization are you with? So I'm with Atos. We're a, a, a multinational IT um, transformation organi organization. We've got about 110,000 people in 70-odd countries. So it's, it, it's a large organization. Uh, we're headquartered in France, but we're, we're all over the world. And what do you do at Atos? So I, I'm the global head of accessibility and inclusion, and I wear a couple of hats. One is um, around our policy and our, uh, and our governance, um, but also I, I run our practice, which is our sort of client-facing delivery side of things. Well, and so why, why is an, a corporate brand, a global corporate brand like ATOS concerned about ESG? And also, compliments to ATOS that they have an entire team focused on inclusion and accessibility because I don't see that in a lot of other companies. But, and also, you're part of the Valuable 500. And we also host with a third person access chat for over nine years. But so a lot of work's being done. But why so, is this important to ATOS? Well, well, firstly, as a French organization, we have a raison d'etre, so a, a sense of purpose. And, and we built inclusion into our sense of purpose. But, but we've been doing sustainability really well as an organization for a long time. Um, we're continuously top rated in our industry for sustainability. And when I talk about sustainability, we're talking about the three major topics. So ESG, so environment, social, and governance. And, and, and so essentially accessibility, disability inclusion is a social topic. Right. But in order for us to do it well, we, we really need to wrap some governance around it. So, um, so that's why we have the structure of the program. And, and then also we want to actually touch all three points. And so what we try and do is find ways that we can reduce two sets of negative externalities in one. So when we're addressing um, new projects, so for example, our branding, um, we, we, we did some eco-branding. So we reduced the, the carbon emissions and energy usage of our branding through going into dark mode, etc. We also reduced the negative externalities of exclusion by taking into account better color contrast, better legibility of font. So we, we made it more accessible, less energy consuming. Okay, so, so all of these topics we're trying to bring together. And, and likewise with the partnership we had with um, GIZ for our ICT for Inclusion Challenge, GIZ plus others, because we work with Zero and Shoka and Enable India, to um, actually bring together the three topics. So we were looking at mitigating the, the, the risks of climate change through technology upon people with disabilities. So the idea is, again, bringing all of these elements together so you have a holistic approach right. to um, making sure that people aren't excluded. Right, and, and this really ties into the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, ab absolutely. So um, the UN SDGs are mentioned disability specifically in about five different SDGs. Uh, so clearly, as part of our sustainability policies and topics, uh, and as our part of our governance, we map all of that, uh, and we report on that. So we have something 
which is called dual reporting. So we don't just report on our financial results. When we produce our annual report, it's a combined report. So it covers all of our ESG topics as well. And then we have something called a URD, which is a universal registration document, which maps out all of the stuff we're doing on diversity, accessibility, disability inclusion, social topics, etc., so that you can see that. So you can see what we're doing year on year in our in our annual report. And that actually has a material effect on the on the share price of the organization. So yeah. so the stuff that we're doing when it impacts the share price of a billion dollar euro organization, it's serious. And that means that people start taking the governance seriously as well. But Neil, that sounds very, very complicated. And of course, I do access chat with you and it, it, there's a lot of moving parts with this. And how are corporate brands, especially global corporate brands, handling all these moving parts and making sure they are taking care of our planet? We don't have planet B, but they're also taking care of all of the human beings. And I've seen the commitment to inclusion that, ex that ATOS has shown, but it seems very complicated. How can other corporate brands do this? It is complicated, um, <laughs> but we have lots of work streams and we have uh, single points of contact across the business so we have an accessibility team and we have then the box single points of contact that are working in specific areas of the business whether that be procurement recruitment the local hr um, our partner networks so how we partner with organizations and and so they get some training and, and we have a governance structure and and regular st steering committees to keep track of that and then we have a global to local approach. And I'm very lucky to have some extremely talented oh, help running yes. the program and contributing in the team. And you can check out some of our team members at the conference. So <laughs> Alexandra's here, Ricardo's here, Beatrice is here, Yulia's here. So um, come and meet the team because they're the ones that are doing the heavy lifting. I'm just the one having the silly ideas and they're making it real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but uh, I, that is definitely not true because you have shown a lot of innovation and leadership on a global perspective, which we certainly appreciate. So what tips would, would you have for other organizations that want to make sure that we, the public, society, knows that there are corporations that are adding value to these topics like ESG? That's obviously so important into our world. Do you have any advice for corporations? So I think most organizations have something that they're good at and they have uh, processes that, that work well in their organizations. And what I would say is, don't go against the flow. Find out what's good in your organization and try and tie in your disability inclusion aims to the things and the structures and the processes that your company excels at. So for us, because we already did all of the sustainability work really well and we had governance and structure and the organization understood it, mirroring that and tying it to that made it much easier for us to manage to cascade that across all of the different parts of the organization because we just co-opted the CSR structure and the ESG structure and embedded ourselves into it. Right. It, it, it's, uh, I know we're almost out of time, but it is a very complicated thing, and I often see consultants stepping in and saying, oh, you know, we can help you do that, but I think often we don't understand the complexity that uh, the major global corporate brands are walking, which is why conferences like this and happy 14th Zero Conference, uh, Zero Project Conference um, this year and with over a thousand attendees, amazing. So this is one way to move forward, but let me give you the last words. Excellent, so, so every organization can do this. Mm -hmm. You have to start somewhere and expect that progress won't be fast, but it can be inexorable. I, 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 I think that we're like, in large corporations like we are, we're like an oil tanker. So it takes a long time to start the turn, but once you've started, there's no going back. And, and, and okay. that's the thing, you build upon the progress that you make year on year. Yes, we're complex, but we also have scale and we can leverage that scale across the entirety of the ecosystem. And that's why we come to conferences like this. That's why we partner with Valuable 500, uh, ILO, uh, Business Disability Forum, you name it. Because, My purple space, there's yeah, just so absolutely. many, there's so many amazing people and we, a lot of them are at this conference. And we have to work together. And, and, and that's really important because 
if we don't work together, we're all in silos, and that diminishes our efforts. So by working together, we can move the needle forward much quicker. And you also identify as a person with a disability, as do I. Yeah, oh, abso yep. absolutely. So, so we're I think part of the community. Ab absolutely. And I think that that's something that sometimes, as people with invisible disabilities, it gets forgotten about. But, but absolutely, it's really something that um, I'm happy to talk about and I think brings value to the way that we approach our program. Okay. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate it. Thank you to Zero Conference. Zero Project Conference. All right, um, another exciting best practice we just heard of here at the Zero Conference. Um, treating exclusion like pollution um, and using the same principles, looking at uh, environment as well as social as well as governance methods to make sure that corporations that are aimed on making money not only aim on making money, but make a difference in the world. Um, how do you do that? Um, you say that adding value to the company uh, happens by, for instance, doing reporting on other aspects than financial, like diversity, but also environment. So put that all together. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so what we heard from your best practice is that you build inclusive solutions into your company and do that in all aspects of the circle. For instance, the HR circle, uh, product circle or cycle, um, and all the processes you do in a company, right? Yes. Okay. And um, yeah, it's, it's important for corporations to make a, a change in the world. And maybe you want to add to that. The last message you gave us was, yes, you can do it, even if it's a large tanker moving slowly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I just have one further thing to say, and mm -hmm. that is we can make good money from doing good things. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with making good money mm -hmm. by doing good things. In mm -hmm. fact, it's incumbent upon us to make more money doing good things than doing bad things. I would not add to that. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm so impressed you could do that. That is quite Thank the you. talent. Can I get a picture? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. That is